Today we have a 3650. TR3650. This one is from an 05 Mustang GT. Actually a saline, but that shouldn't make a difference. Um, the biggest difference in the 05 to 2010 is where the shifter bolts. The 04 and older will have a traditional style shifter that bolts in from the top. Okay, and this one doesn't have the traditional dry shaft flange. It's got a big ass nut right there. The size that seems to work on that is uh, one and a quarter. You can't see that from here. You'll have to take my word on that. Okay, I'm going to try hitting that with my electric impact and hope for the best. The bolts right here are the 10 millimeters. Okay. And then on this side, half inch fit perfectly with no play. All right. Then we have some detent plugs we'll have to deal with later. Uh, they're on the opposite side of the transits facing down. Now, this is the only internet that has got a full disassembly. I may or may not replace the synchros when I uh, have it apart. Worthy of mentioning, I am shooting this with my video camera. So if you're a real tech geek and you want absolutely perfect show quality movie studio transmission rebuild video, this is not it. I'm just your average guy building transmissions. I've been doing it for about 10 years out of my garage. And uh, I want to I want to help the, uh, the people out there. The low budget hot rodders like me. You know, I do this for mod money. I'm not making money off it, so if you don't like the quality of the video, just shut it off and move on. So, anyhow, we'll get started pulling this apart. There is a free Tremec 3650 manual on the internet that goes step-by-step -step instructions on how to do it. Um, I built one of these before, so I'm not an expert. Um, however, I've, I've got enough to know uh, be a little dangerous and... I'll make the mistakes for you so that you don't have to. So first I'm gonna start off with pulling the 10 millimeter bolts off the throwout bearing. Then there's some tabs on the opposite side. I'm gonna squeeze, I'll pull the whole throwout bearing out. Get yourself some in and out trays or whatever works for you to put your bolts in. Have a neater table than me. Uh, pull out all of the bolts around the circumference. Leave two in on opposite sides. Let's go ahead and spin that nut off. Um, if memory serves me, this might have to be pressed off. Okay, uh, I'll show you when we get there. Then when that's off, we're going to yank this so we can pull the bolts out. Step number one, I always jack this up. But there, uh, people never drain the damn fluid when they pull these things. I believe the drain plug is... There it is right here. Very bottom. Make sure you yank the drain plug. Otherwise, you're going to have fluid all over your bench and you can see my wood is colored transmission fluid so anyhow I'm gonna press pause and I'll come back in a minute because I can't uh, shoot and work at the same time this was just slightly tricky but not too bad in order to pop this throw up bearing out I just pushed in here right there let's focus there you go a little clip right there one on the opposite side here. Just kind of pushed them in. Whole thing slid right out. I like to use my handy electric impact. I had a real nice heavy duty air compressor and I used it too much and my motor seized up. So that's on a future to-do list. Let's see if this gets it off because if it doesn't, we're going to have to do some tricks to get this thing off. Memory serves me. If you're using a breaker bar instead of an impact, then you might be in for some tough times. You're going to have to probably stick it in the gear and you're going to have to, uh, it's going to be tough for you. You're going to have to hold it down. So you're going to have to keep the whole trans from moving. So. That might be a deal breaker for some of you guys. Uh, you might be able to put a strap wrench on this actual part right here. Uh, if you don't know what a strap wrench is, look at it. Nice ones have a chain and a handle. And you keep it from moving. You know, Harbor Freight sells one with a rubber strap. Uh, I also wanted to show you some light troubleshooting procedures. It applies to all transmissions. 
you want to spin the input shaft. This is a T5 off a of Fox body that's all finished. See? You can hear that. Nice and smooth. That's what it's supposed to feel like. No catching at all, right? Also check in and out play. There's no in and out play. A little bit of up and down, left and right. That's normal because the pilot pairing is going to hold that in place, right? Okay, so this particular unit was run without fluid. I suspect it has a bad input shaft, bad cluster shaft. Now go ahead and listen to this. You can hear that. She is all chewed up. Whenever you hear that in a transmission, that means you've got broken and worn teeth. First thing to do when purchasing a trans. Look at how much in and out play is in that too. Quite a bit, like 15, 20 thousandths or more. And that's more up and down play than I'm usually comfortable with. So this guy's done some damage to this unit. Hell, is that the seal popping out? It is. <laughs> the spring on the seal so this should be interesting once I crack her open let's see what happens with this hmm. I may have to uh, get that strap wrench and breaker bar on here like I had mentioned to you guys let me see if I can hold it with my hand I'll be right back Nut came right off with that. It um, hmm. might not be in the best of shape unless that's some kind of oh, that's just some kind of Teflon or rubber outer sealing. Yeah, it's not metal. I'll probably put some Teflon seal back on there or something. Maybe, maybe a light case of thread locker. So it looks like it originally had a little bit of a Teflon seal on there. Anyway, that came right out. I think there's a washer on the inside of it. Yeah, so let's see if we can't get that washer out. I mean, my BFM here, big magnet. I said this is gonna be a little jumpy. This poor little car didn't stand a chance. I bought it for parts, had a 3550 Tramic in it. So that car had to be parted out, bad motor. And of course, I get the one that's too big. Not too worried about it. Once I press that off, it'll pop right off. Sometimes you can just tap it lightly with a hammer. Don't go too apeshit or you're going to be breaking stuff. You can actually see right down there, the little chrome part as I tap it, it's coming out. If you didn't have any better tools, I guess you could whack on it and do it for a while. I do have some better tools. I've got a couple of two jaw pullers that I'm going to go ahead and put on that. See if I can find the extensions. I have a serious lack of organization in here. I'm yapping too much. Here they are. Extensions. I've got a couple shorter ones. I'll come back when it's set up. We are back. Now, don't use an electric impact on here. It can give a false sense of, uh, well, it won't give any sense of feel. However, I saw that it was already moving on its own with a hammer, so I'm not worried about it. This is quite an expensive proto tool. P-R-O-T-O, -O. I think it's like a $300 tool or something. You know, it comes in a nice little case. And, uh, you know, whatever. So, uh, two jaw pullers like this can probably be had at Harbor Freight or maybe even a rental at AutoZone. You could probably continue to whack on it with a hammer, um, as long as you don't go crazy and be stupid. And uh, make sure you plug in your device. Let's see, I want to go forward with this. it is keep track of the uh, assembly there was a washer well, that's actually made out of rubber going down first then you had the washer right and then 
was the nut. Take a billion pictures to keep track. I've got the video to keep track here. So now we can slip off. There's a seal right here. And when you have it all apart, I would suggest replacing that seal. Okay. What I'm going to do from here is I'm going to stand it up vertically. There's a hole in my workbench you might need for some vertical transmissions. You can kind of see it here. That allows the input shaft to poke down because you're going to be standing up transmissions on end. Anyhow, I'm going to stand it up on end. I'm going to pull all of these 10 millimeter bolts. Ha! I just remembered I'm going to drain the fluid first. Then I'm going to pull the bolts and I'll come back when the top, uh, the lid is off. I have yet to meet a customer that has drained their fluid. Well, that's not true. But most people, don't forget to plug her in. Sorry. We'll bring your transmission absolutely full of fluid. Ooh, that's no difference. I don't know if you can see that. That is covered, covered with magnetic particles coming out of there. Woo! A lot of air bubbles, but man, there's some bad stuff in here. I'm not sure if you can see that. Let's see if I can avoid dropping my phone in there. Yeah, you can see that. All the metal particles and shavings that are just floating on the top there. Well, apparently they added fluid, but it was too little too late. So, this transmission is not going to look good on the inside. Alright, stinky transmission fluid smell. Actually, it doesn't smell like trans fluid. It sounds like, it smells like synchro mesh. Anyway, this, this trans kind of sucks. Uh, some have a little slot where you can pry, you know, and I usually take an old Mustang tire iron, stick it under there and pry. This one did not, so I had to get creative, use the combination of a hammer, punched up there, then I took the hammer and I beat on the bottom of this, and uh, it's only silicone holding it on after you get all the bolts off. All right. Little bearing in here. Doesn't look like it falls at holy moly. Let's see if I can get a good shot at that. Yep. Woo! Damn. <laughs> holy God. Okay, from here I go back to my manual and I read up on what to do next. However, there's a washer here. Keep track of that, that's gonna come off. Okay, we're gonna take the pliers, snap ring pliers that look like this. I got these at McFaddendale. You can get them on the internet. Okay, uh, we're gonna pull this clip off right here. We're gonna take that off. Now often you can get a punch underneath it and drive it up. But it tends to be a soft material, so I'm going to use my uh, two-jaw puller on it that you saw earlier. And then from what I understand, there's actually a ball bearing underneath. So take your time. You don't want the ball bearing to drop. And after that's done, we're going to remove the next snap ring from here, which is the uh, fifth reverse, I believe. Fifth? It's fifth. And uh, we're going to drive the punch out. Five thirty seconds punch. As soon as we drive that punch out, right, and come out this side, we'll lift out the whole arm and the gear after we pull the snap ring off. That whole arm and the gear will come out next. We're going to expose these three forks, uh, shift rails, I'm sorry. In order to do that, we'll wind up pulling all these out. So drive all of those 530 seconds out. Make sure you take careful pictures of how all this goes back together. As soon as I go offline here, I'm going to take a billion pictures. Okay, so then you're going to drive out all the punches. There's one more punch here, right? Okay. Don't forget that plastic washer. Once we pull apart that whole top end, there's a shift interlock plate under here held on by two bolts. Okay. 
This whole shift rail me- mechanism is real fucking hokey. Excuse my language. Um, this is probably the most difficult part of the build. Uh, be careful. Really careful. There are uh, three little uh, indent plugs, they call them? No, not the indent plugs. Three little doohickeys. I'll show you when I get there. And they, they go flying. Now, there's also indent plugs that I'm supposed to remove. Yep, yep. We'll do that last. It's a little Torx bit. I don't know what size that is. It looks like it could be a T40 or so. I'll tell you when I get there. Okay, those go into the shift rails and will allow you to actually pull the rails out uh, when we get to that point. So I will come back to you uh, probably part two. I'm going to address it next.